Yo guys, it's Captain Thorpe here and today I will be counting down the top 10 Liverpool players of the 2016-17 season. Now as the new season approaches, I'll take a little break from the transfer videos I've recently been doing, but don't worry, they will be back soon. But in the meantime, let's do this different video. Now I'll just kick off with the players that didn't quite reach the top 10 but have appeared for us this season. Uh, mainly the youngsters, so we've got the likes of Kevin Stewart, Marco Grejic and Trent Alexander-Arnold first. They barely played a game, so we've not got much to say about them, so they obviously didn't make the top 10. And then, of course, moving on, Alberto Moreno, um, Ajaria and Woodburn barely played for us either. To be fair, Moreno came off the bench a fair few times. But especially now with the signing of Andrew Robertson, I can't see him playing much next season and he probably will be sold this window and if not, next. Right, now into the bigger players. Now I have Loris Carius next. Um, we signed him at the start of the season. We got him pretty cheap, but he was one of the best Bundesliga keepers last season, so we thought it was going to be brilliant. And he was very inconsistent when he came to the club. He, he didn't have many good games, it was very few, and he just wasn't good enough, to be honest. And he was replaced by Mignolet very soon. He's not been good enough. He is only young, though. Hopefully, he will improve with age. But um, if anything, all he's done is proved how good Mignolet is and how wrong we were to doubt him. So really, Carius has been very disappointing this season. Uh, moving on, Daniel Sturridge. Now I'm a huge fan of Daniel Sturridge. I think he's absolutely brilliant, but he's just, just not been getting the playing time. I can't put him in the top 10 this season if he's not played enough games, and that's not really his fault. That's, that's Klopp's fault for not giving him the opportunity. And um, I think he deserves the opportunity because he's absolutely brilliant. I know we've got we've got um, Roberto Firmino, but we play Origi too often. We play Origi all the time. Why don't we play Sturridge instead? We could put both of them on the pitch, Origi and Sturridge. I don't know, but um, so I can't rate Sturridge any higher. But I do think he's a very good player, and honestly, he's one of the best players in the Prem. Well, one of the best strikers in the Premier League. Um, then we've got Lucas and Clavin. These two have been playing centre-back when necessary. They've been playing quite often with various injuries to Lovren and um, Matip, for example. They've been they've been okay, but they've not been absolutely world-class, and they don't deserve a place in my top ten. Moving on, Mignolet definitely deserves a place ahead of Carrius in the countdown, but doesn't quite make the top ten because you do have a lot of attacking players that have been very good this season, and Mignolet has been inconsistent as always, although he has improved since last season this year. He has been okay. Then we have um, Matip and Lovren. They both just miss out on the top ten place. Maybe um, one of them deserves it, but again, our defence has been our weakest um, link this season, so really I don't really feel like I can rate centre-backs as high as the top 10. Right, moving on into the top 10, we have Divock Origi. Now, I said I'd rather play Storage than Origi, but because Origi has played, he yeah, started 14 games. And to be fair, he does score. I mean, he doesn't pass that often, but he does score. He gets seven goals in those 14 starts. But um, he doesn't really track back, but again, he's a striker, so you can't really blame him for that. Um, pretty clean. He's not he's not picked up a single card this season. And um, he's, been, he's been decent. So I think, yeah, he deserves a place to just sneak into the top 10. Moving on, we have Henderson, the captain at number 9. And to be honest, he's been injured for a fair amount of the season. So I can't really rate him too high. But he did score that screamer against Chelsea. He's got four assists and the highest amount of tackles per game in the league. He's in a brilliant defensive mid. Hopefully, well, we will keep him. There's no speculation around him. And hopefully he'll be captain for the rest of his career. Yeah, he's absolutely brilliant and um, definitely want to keep him. Hopefully we'll have an injury-free season next year. Um, eighth place, Chan. Very close to Henderson. I was, I, was, mm, I was unsure on who to rate higher. But I gave it to Chan because he's played a couple more games, scored five goals actually and although his pass completion and his tackles are slightly lower he has been a pretty solid player both of them have been have been very good he deserves a place in the in the top 10 and hopefully we'll stay at liverpool right um next up we got the fullbacks klein first at number seven he's been consistent as always there's not really many problems i can find with klein he doesn't do anything absolutely special but um he's just a very very good defender to be honest the other fullback is James Milner, who has been absolutely exceptional in the 36 starts 
out of the 38 games. I mean, he's a centre mid, or right mid. Actually, I don't even know what his preferred position is anymore. He can play wherever you want him to, and he's absolutely brilliant wherever you do want him to play. He's been playing at left back this season, solving our problems, and has been absolutely perfect. And just because of the versatility he's got, and the fact that he's still quality in defence and in midfield, even on the wings, he can play anywhere. He scored seven penalties out of eight, which is pretty solid. I mean, to be fair, I hadn't missed one since 2009. Where he missed the one against Southampton in about 20 penalties. He scored on the trot. Um, it's, he, he's got a few assists. And um, yeah, he's just, he's just a very, very good player and he definitely deserves a place in that top 10. And the versatility can go a long way, which is another reason why we may want to sign Oxley Chamberlain because he is also very versatile. Anyway, moving on into the top five. Now, I have put Adam Lalane at number five. Um, he started most of the games, he scored 8 goals, assisted 7, so he's been very good and he's been one of those main 4 players, those attacking players that just do all, all the attacking work for us and make us become one of the highest scorers in the league, along with the likes of Coutinho, Firmino and Mane. Lana has been absolutely exceptional this season, one of his best seasons actually. He's getting on a bit, he's 29 years old but he has been playing exceptionally well, so obviously he deserves a place in the top 5. Likewise, Sadio Mane is number four. Now, I think this is a bit too low, actually. But I have put Mane fourth. To be fair, he has been out injured for some of the season and out for the African Cup of Nations. So he's um, started the fewest games from the top uh, seven. But in those games, he scored 13 goals, which is joint top scorer with Coutinho. Assisted five, which is respectable. And... Um, and to be honest, he's been he's been a very good player. He's been absolutely brilliant. When he left in it in January, we thought, you know, we can't do anything. Maybe we're just a one-man team. We did prove that we're not towards the end of the season. But Manny has been absolutely exceptional. In third place, though, this might be a little bit of a shock. Genie Wijnaldum. And you know what? It shouldn't be a shock. He starts most of the games. He scored six and assisted nine. The most assists of any Liverpool player this season. He, may, he makes a couple of tackles each game. He's got a very, very high pass completion. The highest of anyone in the top ten. And um, and he's pretty clean. So, actually, he's been a very good player. He started more games than Manny, which is... Um, part of the reason why I've um, I've been able to put him higher than Mane, but also the combined goals and assists is actually pretty close. And he's only a midfielder, and Mane is a forward. Makes more tackles, more more passes, cleaner player. So actually, he deserves a place ahead of Mane in the um, in the top ten. But we're moving on into the business end. And now at number two, we have Roberto Firmino, who started 34 games, scored 11, assisted seven, which is brilliant, and um, makes. One of the highest tackles of any player in the top five. Pass completion, 79%, which is decent. But um, Firmino is just a very, very good player. He's very talented. He's very clever. And um, and it's just a joy to watch him play for Liverpool. But finally, number one, there's only one man. It's Felipe Coutinho. He is not going anywhere. And I'm going to make a video on that very soon about this um, transfer saga between Liverpool and Barcelona for Coutinho. It's not going to happen. But you need to stay subscribed for that video. Anyway, Coutinho obviously deserves um, first place. He's not started the most games because he's been out injured for a little bit in the middle and at the end. But he's still joint top scorer. Still got seven assists. Um, pass completion is pretty high. He's pretty clean. Only two yellow cards. He's just absolutely exceptional. He's a world class player. <laughs> he's just an absolute, just like I said with Firmino, he's an absolute joy to watch. He's got a brilliant head on him. He's very well, he's pretty fast. And he's yeah, a brilliant player. So he certainly <laughs> he's pretty obvious Coutinho deserves the top spot. Best player in the team. One of the best in the league. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please let me know in the comments if you disagree with any of the positions for the players in this countdown. And uh, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already but until next time i will catch you later adios